Stay tuned. Today we're going to be covering ransomware, Cisco exploit, update on Larry Love, Swift Network, and a Yahoo breach. This is a Security Weekly production. Brought to you by IT Pro TV, an easy, entertaining approach to online IT training. IT Pro TV offers 1,000 hours of up to date, high quality video training content. Course topics include certified cloud security professional, ethical hacking, cryptography, and VMware. You can stream their courses live or on demand to your mobile device, all for one low monthly subscription price and cancel at any time. Visit itpro.tv forward slash hack naked to upgrade your brain with the most popular IT certifications. Use the code HN30 for a free seven day trial and get 30% off for life. Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. Welcome to another episode of Hack Naked News. I'm your host, Aaron Lyons, and we're recording on September 22nd, 2016. So let's kick it off here. Ransomware, and I've got a bunch of ransomware news for you. To start off with ransomware, the top story is Stampedo. So the Stampedo ransomware has taken ransomware to an all new low, and they are actually encrypting ransomware, uh, encrypting files that has been encrypted by other ransomware. In addition to your normal user documents and file extensions, they're specifically targeting files with the extensions of known other ransomware. Now, luckily for us all, developers did a horrible job and there is a decryptor out there. Out there, So you're still only gonna have to pay once to decrypt your files. Now, rather than targeting files, a new ransomware variant by the name of Mamba is encrypting entire partitions of hard drives. So then the ransomware prevents the victim computer from booting without a password, which is actually the decryption key. So this is much like the Petya ransomware, which we covered back in April of this year, which encrypts the master boot record of drives. Petya luckily has a decryptor also available, but so far Mamba hasn't been broken. Now, you might have heard that the primary malvertising campaign for the Neutrino exploit kit was just taken down a couple of weeks ago. And the administrators of the rig exploit kit are rushing to fill the void with a new malvertising campaign of their own that's pushing the CryptMic ransomware. Now, rig is currently making use of a technique that was used by Angler where the attackers are using st stolen domain credentials to set up subdomains to divert their traffic to ar arbitrary sites. It's also exploiting victims mainly via known Adobe and IE vulnerabilities. Again, stressing the importance of patch, patch, patch. Now, we covered the Phantom ransomware last month, and you may recall that this ransomware is disguising itself as a Windows update and is displaying a fake Windows update screen while it runs. Well, it just got a new update and it no longer has to communicate with a command and control server. It's also determining the amount of ransomware by the name of the running ransomware process. So the ransomware itself is looking at its name and saying, if it's this name, we're going to charge this much. If it's this name, we're going to charge this much. If it's that name, we're going to charge that much. So this allows the attacker to create multiple campaigns targeting different victims using the same code, but can just request a different ransom amount by changing the file name of the ransomware executable. Now this allows him to ask for a larger ransomware when targeting business users, say, versus home users. That's it for ransomware this week. But Cisco has just released another advisory 
for shadow broker exploits. Benign certain from the shadow broker dump has been seen in the wild. Now this exploit takes advantage of a vulnerability in the Ike version one protocol that allows a remote attacker to retrieve the memory contents of a vulnerable device. Now this affects all versions of iOS. Now that's Cisco iOS, not Apple iOS prior to version 5.3 in Pix firewalls, which haven't been supported since 2009, but we all know there's plenty of them still out there running firmware below 7.0. Now there's no patch right now and there's no workaround available. Though Cisco has published snort rules to detect the attack. We've previously covered the story of the British hacker Lowry Love. You may recall that his computers were seized by the British National Crime Agency back in 2013, and he was charged by the U.S. for hacking into the U.S. Army, NASA, and the U.S. Federal Reserve networks. Now, he's been fighting extradition, extradition to the U.S. ever since, and the British courts just this past Friday have approved his extradition to the U.S. Now, the U.S. claims that Love is tied to Anonymous, and also the charges that he's been levied against charges that have been levied against him mean that he could face up to a lifetime in prison. It's going to be interesting to see if U.S. prosecutors are going to make an example of him or not. Now, we haven't talked about the SWIFT network for a while. And the, SWIFT, C, C, the CISO, CISO of SWIFT, just announced that they're continuing to see banks attacked in search of security gaps that can allow attackers to exploit the SWIFT network to steal money. And he went on to warn that the attacks are not going to stop, which isn't a big leap there. And he says any customer that fails to address the logical and physical security of its environment is at risk. And I think this is a really valid point here that he's making. The banks themselves are responsible for the security of their networks. And we have to recall that all of the cyber heists that we've seen against the SWIFT network haven't exploited any vulnerability, any vulnerability in the SWIFT network itself, but rather the poor security of the victim bank. Now, earlier this year, SWIFT began their customer security program to help their member banks strengthen their security. And they announced that in December, they're introducing daily validation reports. Now, this is going to allow banks to review a daily summary of all of their messages. So our last story this week, you might recall back at the beginning of August, we covered the posting of a dump of 2 million Yahoo logins for sale. Now, from a sample of the dump, many of these accounts were inactive. And there's quite a bit of speculation around whether this was an actual dump from a breach, or if it was compiled from a non number of other dumps. Well, it's looking like Yahoo is going to confirm that it was breached all the way back in 2012, which has led this to this disclosure of 200 million account details. That's it for this episode of Hack Naked News. Thanks for listening. Send us your feedback. We'd love to hear from you. And keep on hacking naked. <laughs>